<coughs> excuse me, good start. Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 Twitter handle. You know that off by heart by now. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW. An inspirational start there, Sean, from your old oh, Sorry, we'll, we'll cut that out of the podcast version, Tony. Sorry. The Anne's cough there. Oh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be seamless. Affecting your, your old dad there, but there we go. How are you? You all right? You good? Aye, not bad. We a bit worried about you with that cough now. But, uh... <laughs> Just bang on cue since we started it. There you go. <laughs> now we'll talk Celtic Rangers in the League Cup final in a second, but I'll just direct you, as we do every day, to the strap line at the bottom, guys. And there it is. It's a new deal for you. We are now, the podcast Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are a number one hair transplant company in Europe. And they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. And also, we have a new deal. Subscribe to the Celtic Way website. And it costs you a pound for four months of access to everything that we do on the website. And also, the first 100 new subscribers receive this limited edition AT artwork of Colin McGregor by popular artist made by Frankie. That's all you do for the click of a button, and you can receive one of them. And join us, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Cracking offer, Sean, is it not? It is, aye. And it's, uh, as I said on Friday, they are going quite fast, so I would, uh, I would get on it. Uh, or I might need to ask to extend it. <laughs> <laughs> and we also say thank you to Seneca for their sponsorship of the morning briefing. Quiet weekend in association yep. football, Sean. We were both at Hamden to see Celtic defeat Cole Marnock 2 nothing. Cold and miserable wet day it was, but Celtic got the job done in the end. They will now play Rangers, who beat Aberdeen 2-1 after extra time yesterday. On yes, February uh, the twenty sixth, Sean. Now, your takeaways from that would, I mean, we spoke at the game on Saturday. And we always felt that Celtic were in control, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that Kilmarnock were going to score. Yes, they threatened and they offered a lot more than they did the previous week. But I always mm. felt that Celtic would go up the park and score a second goal. In fact, it took them to injury time for George's Jack and Marcus to add to Dyson. My does early opener mm -hmm. is neither here nor there, but and getting two goals disallowed in between times. But, yeah, well, I mean, wasn't a great performance, but enough. They did the job again. They found a way to win. Aye, uh, that's the main thing. A semi-final, I suppose. But, uh, no, I think it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't be hard for Kilmarnock to offer more than what they did last yeah. weekend. Uh, but to their credit, they did. They had 14 shots, which was, well, 14 times the amount that they did uh, last week. Uh, I... I do agree with you. And when we were sitting there, we kind of we heard the kind of discourse coming out saying it was quite an even game. I don't think it was necessarily an even game. I just think uh, I still think Celtic dominated. I still think it was one of those kind of traditional. You need to break us down. You need to sit in the in, in our half that kind of thing and the command half and try and break us down and and uh, and and it played out much the same as most domestic games do. That yep. said, Kilmarnock ended up. Uh, when you're looking at the XG and stuff like that, ended up with, with a higher XG, and that's that's uncharacteristic for Celtic to to uh, to lose in that sense, uh, if you know what I mean. Yes. But ultimately, Celtic still took their chances. The best chance of the game was still Celtic's. They took it. It was Yakimakis's at the end. Um, all right, the opener, fortuitous maybe because it's a, a deflection. Yep. Uh, you saw me. I was hovering over the. I was doing the tweets. I was ready to say it's 1-0 Celtic and it's dot, 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 Kyle Lafferty. Uh, and then we've seen the replay, you get a wee screen at Hamden, we've seen the replay, it was Maida that got it, which obviously helps my case because I've been I've been shouting about Maida yeah. as an underdog for the uh, top scorer and stuff. But uh, all right, the opener might have been fortuitous, but ultimately I still think Celtic dominated that game. Maybe not, as I say, in the underlying stats like XG, like they usually do, but I still yeah. think the way that it played out, it wasn't as entertaining a game as what as what I, I see other people making out to be. Yes, uh, I mean Kilmarnock did have a goal. We noted that Daniel Armstrong gave Bernabe, yes, uh, Alexandra Bernabe, a, a torrid time of it at times, especially the first twenty minutes or so. He got past him at least three times. Aye, that opening half hour, I done him three times. Half hour, yeah, yeah, you know, he yep. got to grips with it a bit after that. 
but also the the disallowed goal, Sean Maida's and sorry, the mm-hmm. uh, Rio Tati Maida, yeah, Maida's, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you flicking up IFAB or? I, well, I wasn't. I wasn't going there. I don't think though, no, because I, I mean, I'm not particular. I don't think it's particularly controversial, do you? No, not particularly. No. Um, yeah. I mean, I can still dig it out if you want. But um, no, uh, I mean, if we go, we we'll go straight to incidents and then come back to individuals then, and maybe yes. maybe end in a high rather than talking yes. about high yeah. for once. Um, but no, I think uh, right, the incidents. I suppose first of all, I suppose the four 0 prediction Tony was accurate if you take in <laughs> the disallowed <laughs> goal. Uh, but. No, I think the Hatati one, when it falls to him, it's the result of a deflection rather than a deliberate deliberate play, meaning he's offside, according to IFAB. Yeah. I mean, initially, when we, when we saw it at the ground, then we had to look at the screen. We had to look at it a couple of times, to be honest. Um, and then as I do, I went up to my favourites, my bookmarks, and get the IFAB thing out. And I was like, All right, well, it obviously comes under the deflection thing rather than the deliberate play. Um, others might see it differently, but for me, that that is why it was ruled out. And I can't really disagree with it. I don't think it's like the see the Abada one against Livingston. Yeah. I don't think it's like that because, as I said at the time for that one, the defender clearly made an attempt to play it. He just totally mucked it up. So Abada was onside. This time it deflected off Ash Taylor. Uh, I didn't see it as a handball either, to be honest, because I was well, I don't think, think it was a handball. I, I don't think he moved into it or anything. I don't think his arm was in an unnatural position. So I, I don't think it was a handball. I think it was just a deflection. Uh, but that said, all of that being said, as much as I'm saying it was the right decision, the, the, the inconsistency of handball decisions yes. so far in Scottish football means that you would be well within your rights to say, well, hold on, point to other incidents and say, hold on, that must be a penalty too then. But ultimately, I suppose where I, where I stand on it is two wrongs wouldn't make it right. Uh, and I think it was rightly ruled out. Yeah. Maida's goal being ruled out, Kyogo coming back from an offside position mm-hmm. and then getting involved. And the, the play by playing a lovely yeah. ball through to Maida. That's what uh, the lines was drawn. The line that you saw, the pictures that were giving you the line, sort of his heel mm-hmm. was offside, Sean. No complaints nah. about that? Or? No, I think it was just very, very, very slim. Um, no, no. First of all, do you agree with the, the Hatati one, or do, or do you think it was maybe. Uh, no, I, 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 I questioned it at the time, but having the benefit of. The monitor beside us and the TV replays. Then I can see why. I, I think it. I, I like you. I don't think it's an intentional attempt to play the ball, and that's what they would have said if uh-huh. they'd have got the IFAB rules up, wouldn't they? I think so. I Mark E coming in saying about the, the deflection rule. Uh, yeah. Saying he saw he saw something in England and and it, it, an extra yeah. explaining about it, so he thought it would be yeah. top. And um, then I, I don't think it was a deliberate handball. I saw a lot of people saying it should have been penalised for handball as well, but. Don't think Ash Taylor knows much about it, does he? Let's be honest. No, I think uh, yeah. put it aside. Adams are in a natural position to me, so I think that would have been pretty. Uh, nice, when you, you look know? at the Connor Goldson one, to me, the argument I've been making was that he met he met both criteria. It was an unnatural yeah. position, and it was a deliberate move towards it because yeah. it was up there at the end yeah. and all that, and it was a reflex save. We asked Taylor. It's down by his side. Down by his it, side it, yeah. it is unlike the Starfield Goldson one. It is put at him at, at a good bit of pace. The Starfield yeah. one was a scuff, really. Um, and uh, and I I just think it, it it goes down as a deflection. I think I think it was yeah. offside. With the Kyogo one you're saying, or the the Maida goal, uh, I agree with. First of all, I agree with, um, with Patrick that it was unlucky because it was a really clever move. Uh, it was a brilliant goal, it yeah. Was a very very good uh, good bit of playing in around the box. But actually, I think it, because of the way that it, the, the they sussed out the way that the way that Kelly was sitting there and they played round it, and then Kyogo pulling off that be through ball. It would have yeah. if it counted have been one of the best goals of the season for me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But ultimately, I his heel was off and very slim margin. But ultimately, I it was it was off. Yeah, no, no, no complaints to be honest, Sean. But uh, I agree with Jerry McCann on that. I, and I agree with Derek Crawford or uh, this comment there. Kyogo's flick was class. It was shame it got ruled out. Correct uh, decision. Oh, yeah, I mm-hmm. I totally concur with that. Okay, we'll get to the big decision, Sean. George's Jackamacus. Right. Penalty for you or not? I think he's a very lucky boy, um, Tony, because to me, right, I think I think if it was in the opposite box, first and foremost, I hate when usually when people do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. If that was in the opposite <laughs> box in the same situation, I would be saying penalty and I'd be saying it more vehemently than what I'm probably saying this. But I I think I think it was a penalty. Uh, it was lucky. What I would 
say most of all though is that I was a wee bit confused. I don't know why he's decided to go about it in that way at that time yeah. in the match. Um, I think it was as much as I'm saying he's lucky. I think it was also daft. Um, yeah. So I don't know where you stand on it, but I think it was well, lucky. ultimately clumsy in the extreme. You know, people talk about a typical forwards challenge, but I, I, I agree with Jason Lee. I have no idea what's going through his mind that late stage in the game, as you say. I totally clumsy, and had it been given, I don't think any of the Celtic supporters could have had any complaints. It, it, nah. To me, it's a it's a stonewall penalty. I've got to be honest. I think he has. He's not only held him, but he's kind of shoved him to the ground a wee bit as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. like rugby, I've seen a lot of people saying that. I just thought it was extremely clumsy and foolish. Especially yeah. that I mean, he made, he made up for it in, in well, no of uncertain terms. But then, can score. It, that, that's, that's football in a nutshell for you, isn't it? Because yeah. that's, that's a hero and villain script yeah. playing out within minutes of each other. Uh, if he gives away a penalty and they score, it takes it to extra time. It's potentially yeah. the, the discourse is all about Jack and Max's head not being in it and what, what's he doing there and all that kind of stuff. Instead, yeah. it's not given. I, um, and again, he gives up the pitch and, and puts the game to bed minutes later. And, and it's, oh, what a player. Again, you go back, again, you go back to it, Sean. You're not looking for favours and all this. No, no, just consistency. They, they, they even themselves out. You're looking mm-hmm. for consistency because we were talking uh, as journalists in the room at one point, weren't we? Mm-hmm. And even the other journalists were saying, I don't know, what's a penalty now or offside? Mm-hmm. Weren't they? They were just saying, you know, it's now down to the referees and interpretation and VAR rules so lots of people who follow football for years are very confused, even experts and pundits, mm-hmm. uh, footballers alike, you know then referees and VAR have just muddied those waters, you know yeah. so it's... you know, th- there's a lot of talk that um, Ange Postecoglou finally coming out and saying something about, about decisions lately and did that play a part in that not being awarded and all that kind of stuff do you know and people are probably going to be like, ah, well, referees are never going to win with you if, if you're saying this, right? But for me, if that in any way did influence it, then that makes it even worse because you've got to be you've got to be calling it as you say. It can't be, oh, I can't give that because somebody's complained. Yeah, that's precisely the kind of culture that you don't want to foster. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that is what it was, but but I do think Celtic get away with one. Um, I'll put it down. We're talking with, about uh, years. A penalty kick. Bye, bye. And I, I mean, as was a, a few comments have said that we got away with one, blah, blah, blah. And okay, it went for Celtic this time. Uh, but to me, that just reinforces the questions about VAR and the officials. What what are they seeing? Yeah, what is the process yeah. that they're going through? Um, so just because it went for Celtic this time, does it mean we're going to sit here and say great decision? Because it wasn't a great decision. No, not a terrible decision. I've, I've, I've banged on about it since VAR came in. Don't want favours. You don't want favouritism. You want consistency, and you want them to get it right. And you're going to get calls, and you're going to get bad calls mm-hmm. against your team. You know that for a fact. But I think that that went truly in Celtic's favour on Saturday, big time. And if you're a Kilmarnock supporter, eh, you know you're, you're you're feeling aggrieved. Aye, I mean, I I, I totally agree with that. Aye, um, and the thing is. This is a bit of a weird way to put it, but if anybody would know how the Kilmarnock fans feel just now, right, usually it's not on the end of a loss this season for Celtic, but it is Celtic fans because there's been so many decisions this season that have been inexplicable in certain ways. And uh, Kilmarnock fans felt a wee bit of that on Saturday. And, and I did feel for them because it was, a, it was a penalty. And again, going back to the two wrongs, don't make a right, Sean. Exactly. Uh, to, exactly. There has to be a way of getting these calls right. Well, well, VAR was meant to be that way, wasn't it? Well, it so was, far, it's so far. It's, it's, it's um, it against your team. As long as they get it right, then... I on that note, before we, before we go on to individuals, uh, yep. VAR, apart from anything else, right, the, the advert for the national game at the national stadium with the pitch, first and mm. foremost, I know the weather was awful, but the pitch over the two days is, was, was shocking to look at, never mind play on. Uh, but VAR going down in the second semi-final when it goes to yeah. extra time, it doesn't, I mean, I've no doubt it's a, like a probably a, a small thing, a technical hitch along along the communication lines and all that, and it is an innocent explanation. But just in general terms, it doesn't look good for Scottish football, these things. Oh, when it it it's almost like, oh, of course it's in Scottish football that that happens in a national semi-final. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I thought it was a 
a particularly bad look. An advert for our game yesterday when that happened, Sean. Mm-hmm. I have to agree with that. Uh, and it doesn't portray our game in a, a great light, does it? And yeah. I think and Poster Pogler was talking about that as well with the state of the, the pitch as well. Uh, national mm-hmm. semi-final. For both semi-finals, the surface wasn't great and he, he wasn't complaining, he was just asking because he said he didn't know the background and what had happened mm-hmm. and what had been what foot, um, what amount of football had been played on it. But I think he was perfectly right to ask the question because first thing I said to you on Saturdays when we walked in was look at the state of that pitch. No. It wasn't it that that was the first thing I said and I, I was surprised as well. Uh, so yeah, I there's a lot of things you can say about Ham, but you know, it's just sometimes you you've got, you've got to at least get the surface right, haven't you? I mean just mm-hmm. make Make it a make it a showpiece. It's a showpiece. It's live. You know, it's going out to lots of people, millions of people watching it. So you have to have all the conditions right. But that's a another argument for another time, possibly okay. now, what, a month and a half before yeah. before the final to get that and and work in order to get it looking yeah. good for a for a proper showpiece. Yeah. Um, so aye, it was. I mean, Derek Crawford says it was embarrassing. It is, and it, uh, there are obviously factors getting into the weather and stuff. But ultimately, you're in Scotland. You're operating. In, you're operating in Scotland. Yes. If, uh, for instance, down here, I know um, Capo, which is just up the road from me, uh, Celtic. A few years ago, now, right enough, I, I don't know what it's like now, but Celtic uh, picked Capo for their youth. Yes, teams. that's right. Because the surf, partly because it was proximity, but also partly because the surface was really good. Uh, and if, if that can be the case at a, a second tier ground, why is it not the case at the National Stadium? Yeah, it just struck me, been, say. struck me as being odd that it was in such a state of disappear, to be honest. But mm-hmm. And apart from anything else, Sam's got a point. Pitch made A pitch being imperfect makes it more difficult for Celtic and any other club, that, that, that a team that wants to play passing football, than it does for a team that just wants to lump it. Um, the, the subtext to Angie's comments, wasn't it? The dot, dot, mm-hmm. dot if you want to read into it like that. But individual, Sean, we touched upon Bernabe, but uh, I I gave him a six. Lots of people said that was a generous uh, man-by-man mm-hmm. mark. In hindsight, should probably been a five. But I, yeah. I think I think he was probably he played in a winning game of final, but I, I thought he got his act together. I, and I think if, if he'd have cost a goal, then yeah. with, with getting beat a couple of times, then, then I maybe. But no, I think probably six was fair enough because he did get a grip, so I agree with you. Um, he was. I, I wrote. I know. I noted down before we started. Just uh, like before the game started on Saturday. I mean, just a couple of individual almost battles that mm-hmm. I was wanting to look out for. Um, he was one of them. Alexandro Bernabe against uh, Danny Armstrong. Because Danny Armstrong's been really good for Coman this season. He was. Um, uh, I mean, we were sitting. We were obviously in the press box, but the, the kind of hospitality guys were behind us. Celtic fans, and they were talking, saying, "Who's that boy? He's he's yeah, yeah. he's turning him up. He's rapid." Um, so I do agree that he'd done him a fair few times in that first half. I thought he struggled with his directness at times, um, but not quite as much in the second. I did think he no, got a wee no, bit no. more of a grip in the second half, which is why I think your six is probably fair enough. Uh, I think he looked good or he looked okay going the other way at times yes. as well. Um, Stuart Ross is actually going to take a closer look at him um, on the website yeah. for us. Uh, I'm expecting him to file the day, so that will be up tomorrow morning. So have a look out for that. See if it reinforces what you think about him. See if it maybe challenges what you think. But as always, Stuart will be kind of he'll be data led, watching the games, pulling out uh, and, uh, sequences and all that. So he'll be he'll be getting his teeth stuck into that. And one man that I thought performed brilliantly and deserved the high mark was Joe Hart, Sean, justifying his high yeah. mark. That I usually give him when he's not had much to do, but yeah, yeah. performed superbly on Saturday. I thought. He was there when they needed him, as Ange Postecoglou said after it. They don't often actually have to, to call on him, but he made a couple of good saves, um, which is why I would say give give Command a wee bit more credit, well, far more credit than what they got last weekend because they actually tested Joe Hart this time. Uh, he was asked to earn his corn, put it that way. Um, yeah. No, I, he did. There, there's no getting away from it. He was facing a wee bit of criticism. We were even talking about him on, on here on Friday for a week or Thursday for a wee while. Um, we talked when it came to doing the predicted lineups. Whether Seagrist, if he was if he was available, would start because he was a league cup keeper. Ultimately, the three of us in were predicted elevens, due mostly to the fact that Seagrist hadn't been in squads for a couple of games. Um, we all went with Joe Hart rather than Scott Bain because we thought there might have been a, a debate because it's a league cup if Seagrist was available, but not really Scott Bain. If if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be Joe Hart again. Uh, 
so there was a wee bit of debate about that, but he played and he was good. And there's no other way I can kind of yeah. sum it up because I'm not saying he had all, he had hundreds of stuff to deal with, but what what he had to deal with, he done it, and he done it at moments that that. All right, you wouldn't have changed the tide of the game, I don't think, because Kilmarnock are not that kind of team where they're going to totally batter you. But it would have changed the momentum slightly. It would have changed Celtic's dynamic slightly, and it, it came up trumps. So, aye, played well. Starfelt for you. Aye, uh, that was that was the set. I had three of these, right? So I had Bernabe versus Armstrong. I had a uh, Starfelt versus Kyle Lafferty, and I had Maida versus Mayo, uh, part two is what I put, because the two of them mm. were at each other constantly last weekend. Um, so for the Carl Stafford versus Lafferty one, I thought, see, apart from that, and the, the, with Stafford, these always catch the eye, right? If he gets dispossessed or he takes too long, he gets caught. That one dispossession that led to the attempted lob mm -hmm. to Lafferty in that first half, um, apart from that, I thought he pretty much dealt with him well enough all evening, Tony. I, I, I don't think he had a bad game. No. But he is prone to these kind of lapses in concentration at times, isn't he? But uh, I spoke to him after it and he said he was all right. He was always confident that Kyle Lafferty was the guy he scores from there, yeah. which is fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I I just wish he would. You know, I, I like Starfield. I think he's an accomplished defender, but you just always feel sometimes there's a rickets in him, don't you? And I don't know. But I think most Celtic supporters are comfortable enough with him, but then maybe not. 100% the way they are with Cameron Carter-Vickers. Oh, no, well, it's, it's hard to get the same level of security yeah. as Cameron yeah. Carter-Vickers, but no, I agree. That's that what I, mean. I think I think he's always, Starfield's always going to be one of the players that the minute that he dips below a seven, it's kind of, the knives are out a wee bit for him, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think he was that bad. I don't I don't think he was bad enough that we should be sitting, like, for instance, saying this, that, no. the next thing. And I think... Um, Derek Crawford comes in saying he was he was maybe a wee bit worried trying to cover for Burnaby as well, knowing that knowing that he was getting done in the opening stages and stuff. I still think overall Starfield had a decent enough game and I don't think Kyle Lafferty really threatened beyond that one dispossession where he went for the yeah. audacious lob, um, which I think is the easiest way to kind of judge it. Others see it differently. Beach Boys coming in saying Starfield for him was the worst player in the park um, and he doesn't rate Welsh, but he'd rather he played before Starfield. Bit harsh, I think. But entitled to your opinion, yeah, yeah, entitled to his opinion. I, I agree with that. I think that's a bit of a, a scathing assessment of Starfield because mm -hmm. I think he's quite an accomplished defender. But there's just that wee bit missing, isn't there? With the Celtic supporters mm -hmm. who don't have a hundred percent faith in them the way they do, uh, Cameron Carter Vickers at his side. Just my thoughts as well mm -hmm. on it, to be fair. But and we both said on Saturday we'll be interested to see what Kobe Yashi brings to the table. And that yes. makes the back uh, role. So yeah. moving forward, we might see more of him. Now, getting into the midfield, Sean Moy, Hatati, and McGregor started. Were you uh -huh. happy with all three of them? Aye. Um I thought I thought they were all they were all good. I I thought McGregor in particular. I seen a, I seen actually see a few comments saying he was not great. Um I thought McGregor had a really good game. Um there was so also a clip that if you were watching on TV, you wouldn't have seen it. But the two of us, been, it was when Liam Donnelly was getting treatment, the Kilmarnock player. Um, and I checked this back uh, on the when I was watching the game back. You didn't see it on the TV. So it would only have been if you were at the game. Um, because the camera was focused on Donnelly getting treatment and going to the sidelines and all that. So about the 35th minute mark. Uh, and we just sat for the full minute and a half or whatever it was and just watched McGregor because he was wandering about. He was talking, to, he was getting... Right. He was having a confab, let's put it that way. He was in a confab with uh, Bernabe, Starfelt, I want to say Hatati. I, think I can't remember, there was another one anyway. There was about four of them. And uh, he, he had a confab with them while William Donnelly was getting treatment. Uh, it seemed to us to be about the manner in which they were choosing to play passes and the passes that they were passing up as well, yes. is what it seemed to us that he was, he was saying. But uh, I, I, I genuinely thought McGregor had another good game. Yes, I thought so too. Uh, thought Moy was excellent and uh, Hatati. Now, I've written a piece that's up on the site today, isn't it, Sean? Yep. With Paul Lambert, former Champions League winner, the former Celtic midfielder Paul Lambert, is speaking about Hatati and his kind of rise uh, from street football Aye. to Champions League level. And, you know, so there it's there, it's in the want to have a read at that. Now, Paul's very good at that. Uh, he did, he did it with me before talking about Matt O'Reilly's abilities mm -hmm. as a footballer. 
and make a nice insight into Rio Hitachi if you want to have a look at that and check it out. It's, the it's, it's good, it's interesting. It's, it's essentially, um, yeah, it's essentially like what a Champions League winner who made that adjustment of going from teams that were never anywhere near Europe to you know, winning a whole thing and being a yeah. key player in the final. Um, what a Champions League winner of, of that ilk in that area of the park sees when he looks at yeah. Rio Hitachi just now. Um, so it's not. It's not a crit- I mean, it's, it's a critique, is what I would say. It's not criticism. It's, no, no, no. In fact, he's very complimentary about him, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. It's, uh, it's more about, as as is Paul Lambert's want of, right, what do you need to do to get the next level? Because it's all yeah. well and good in Scotland, but what does he need to maybe tweak to make it Champions League level rather than just domestic football level? And it's a very interesting take. It's um, it's uh, It means more to me just because it's coming from Paul Lambert, to be honest. <laughs> Indeed. And it's uh, it's worth the read, guys. Uh, you want to uh, want to check it out? What what your thoughts are on Rio Atati? But I thought, yeah, thought Moy had a, a very good game as well. Uh, there was a moment Callum McGregor just went on amazing, didn't he? In the, yep, in the, I, the and, <laughs> yeah, it was just like wow, you know. And, and I think that's. I mean, I read a comment somebody put on Twitter said I heard Callum McGregor was anonymous. Uh, I, I don't know who they heard that from. Uh, I couldn't really believe it. I was just like, wow. It just shows you what football's all about opinions and people see what they want to see or see different things. But I was just like stunned at that comment and I thought that's that's not a narrative that I would ever pursue when you talk about Callum McGregor being anonymous, you know. But mm-hmm. I, I thought Moy was very good on Saturday. Uh, you know, I, he, he looked pretty comfortable and in control. And again, going back to what you said at the start, Sean, the, Kilmarnock played really well, but I never ever felt that Celtic were in grave danger of losing. Hmm. You know, no, or, or, I'm the same. or conceding for that matter. I know Kilmarnock had their moments, but I, I was always quite confident that Celtic would go out of the park and get another one. But because mm-hmm. it took them to injury time to get a second goal in, so be it. And yeah, the first one was fortuitous, but I still think there was an element of calm, control, and assuredness about Celtic. And, and when you do factor in the conditions as well, which played a huge part in it. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. I think um, if we're still sticking with individuals, if you go further forward, I didn't think Jota had a great game. No. Um, which I'm wondering if he's still... I mean, I mean, this might be technically making an excuse for him. It just was a, a subpar game. But I'm wondering if he's maybe taking a wee bit longer to get over the bug that he had. Because um, that's a couple of times he's not maybe been quite... I mean, saying that... Before the and last week he did play well, didn't he? So maybe it's not, but I don't think he had his best game at the semi final. I think Maida, on the other hand, had another good game. Yeah, uh, scored the goal. Obviously, technically scored twice. Um, yeah, but um, I think when I when I said about Martin Ham versus Mayo down as part two, it was mostly because the two of them just went at each other last week. Mm. something awful. Mayo's a quite a big boy for a right back. Um, quite physical. But you know what my does like, just same as what Ange Postecoglou says about it. Does not matter who he's up against or what they're trying to do. I mean, just go, 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 go. Uh, and he'd done that last weekend. He'd done it again this weekend. It wasn't quite as physical a tussle as it was in the last game, but there was still a wee bit of an edge to it because you know what it's like, uh, professionals especially. If you're up against somebody religiously, you end up having a wee, <laughs> wee ding dong with them. You like kind of trying to get one over on them. If it's a physical thing, all the better. Um, the technically, I think. Statistically, Mayo won more duels, but overall, for me, there was only one winner again because Maida scored twice, albeit one ruled out for offside. And I generally thought he got the better of his of, of him as a direct opponent as well. Again, yep, I, I blame Jota's moustache. I think, <laughs> I think you need to get it shaved off since the growing of the, the uh, dodgy Mauser. Uh, there you go. But no, Jota was off, it wasn't he? I have to say yeah. that Maida's just had a real purple patch of form, including. <laughs> Robert Gibson, the Tigers, indeed, Robert. Uh, and Midas had a purple patch in terms of form and goal scoring as well. That was three and three, I think it was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, memory self. So, yeah, I and I just like what Midas bringing to the table at the minute as well. Uh, someone put a comment up just a few minutes ago and saying that uh, if Haksabanovic was fit, fit, they would bring him back for, mm-hmm. uh, for Jota on Wednesday. And I think that would be a, a serious consideration. Uh, I I mean his injuries went a wee, went on for a wee bit longer than I thought. Uh, given the, the initial comments from Ange Postecoglou, I thought it was only going to be maybe a game, maybe two. 
he's been out for a fair few now. Um, I just think when he gets a run of games, it, it's going to end up it's going to end up scary. I think. <laughs> Uh, mm. But he needs to get that run of games as well. He needs to he needs to be fit first and foremost to get them, but he also needs to be given a nod at some point. It's very hard when Maida's scoring goals and Jota's ultimately like the most talented player in, in Scotland. Yeah. It's quite hard to to see him getting the run of games, but he will get them, especially if like right now Jota's maybe not quite make himself undroppable. I I mean I I wrote a piece about Jota saying that he maybe time he's run to form back well. Thought he was back no. Pretty average on Saturday, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in the national team. And, and again, people are saying the conditions are a lot to do. Maybe they did, I guess. Uh, they do play some part in it. But I think he's he's certainly a more technically gifted player than he showed on Saturday and made a real impact at Ibrox when he came on. So that's hopefully the Jota of the future. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, if Haxabanovich has shown any kind of fitness, then it'd be worthwhile considering. Him for a place in the starting eleven uh, on on Wednesday night, but Kyogo for you was he? He put in a lot of effort and uh, uh, he assist. almost had a great assist. assist. Yeah, yeah, no um, yeah, it was a great assist, but obviously the yeah. assist of Val ruled it out. But yeah, and I I I understand why he keeps him on the park for those kind of moments mm-hmm. when people are maybe seeing bring on Jackie Marcus earlier or, or or whatever. But I. I also have loved Jack Amakis's application and attitude and effort mm-hmm. in the two games where he's came on, you know, as a substitute and wanting to make a difference. And he did then, you know, people were talking about his cryptic uh, message on Instagram and stuff like that, see you in the mm-hmm. final, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, my thoughts on him, I, I like big Jack Amakis, I really do. And I would love him to stay and I would love everybody to get round the table and thrash out a settlement and hammer this out and hopefully he extends his stay. Because I just mm-hmm. I just think he brings something really different to the table. But the one thing he does bring is goals. He knows how to unsettle defenders. And I, I guess he's I guess he is. And yeah, there is an argument for him getting more game time. But mm-hmm. you trust the manager, don't you? Mm-hmm. That he knows what he's doing. Uh, I I think we just need to see how it plays out, but the kind of the standard joke on Twitter was, "Oh, he's done well to score that goal from an, Ur- an Urawa Red Diamonds Medical Centre," yeah. and all that, which I think was fair enough, um, given the, the talk before the game and, and, and the days leading up to it. But I agree with you. I think his application was has been good the last two games when he com- when he's come on. I think that's why he's come on in that semi final. Um, yeah. Because make no mistake about it, if there was any doubt about what application he would bring, it would have been Kyogo for ninety minutes. Yeah. Um, so obviously there was the. The caveat that that application maybe spilled over slightly in the, in the Celtic box, uh, but he got away with that one, so it's fine. Um, yeah. Ultimately, people that are pointing out his Instagram post mentioning the final are correct. The final's in February, um, so read into it what you want. But it's um, but it's that, a nice that, message if you're if you're in the camp that that wants something to stay. That's the cliffhanger dot 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 to be continued, isn't it? It's one of those, you know. So, but yeah, I mean it's. I, I, I've often said, and, and I asked Ange after that was one of the questions I asked, whatever happens with Ange in the future, you know, you can't fault his work rate, his attitude and his application and his effort. And, and Ange said that, yeah, he, he watches him every day in training and he had mm-hmm. no qualms about bringing him on. And he said, uh, and it always has been, you know, and he, uh, so he just said, he just said that, uh, you know, why wouldn't you bring him on? Take thing mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm of that opinion as well. Why wouldn't you bring him on? He's a footballer at the end of the day, you know. And some can be, and I, I just think he's been the, the consummate professional and put it and didn't let it all the speculation and didn't let it. And, and even as well, I, I thought the Celtic supporters' uh, reaction to him was good as well, Sean. Because eh? normally you've seen players, uh, uh, you've seen players in the past when these things have happened and they get the the boo boy treatment, but all the Celtic supporters were behind them as well. And they were delighted when he scored, and I think I think a vast majority of Celtic supporters would love him to stay. I I think I think I agree. With you. I think it is a majority. Um, I think to be honest, there's almost a bit of like if the if the talk is that he might go, then it's ah well no fine you're all right I can go on you go right see you later. But ultimately, most people would actually rather he stayed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I well, I mean we'll just need to see how how it goes with that. But I found it interesting that when Ange was asked about it after the game. Uh, 
and I put this quote out at the time, it was on via play, it says, um, or via play as they call it, uh, it was, um, he said, uh, if something comes to the table that one of the lads feels strongly about, then we'll discuss it, which is kind of in keeping what he always says. Yeah. The next sentence he says, but right now I'm more about bringing ones in than letting them go. Yeah. Which kind of, I mean, for me, without anybody having said anything to back this up, but for me, I, I, I've been of the opinion that out with maybe one more, maybe a striker if Yakimakis was to leave, I, I, I'm kind of thinking there will be more outgoings than, than incomings from this point on. Uh, but that sounds as if maybe there's going to be more than one more uh, <laughs> coming in that he's, that he's hoping for. Yeah. Which brings me to the, the question, where? What positions? <laughs> yes, well, where would you strengthen, sure? Well, apart from apart from an, an, another striker, yeah. I, I don't really... I mean, succession planning for Joe Hart's a thing, but I think that's probably for maybe summer and beyond. And on that yeah. note, i seen Toby Willayemi's away on loan. Yeah. Um, Cork City, was it? So that, yeah. that could maybe play into that, get him some first-team football. Connor Hazard's also back, but I think he got his chance, um, even though he went to HJK and Helsinki and, and did really well. Um, I think the succession plan for Joe Hart is something, but I think that's maybe a longer-term thing, maybe the summer and beyond. So beyond another striker, I'm not really, I'm not really sure, because he's already got his left centre-back brought in, he's got his right-back brought in, he's got another midfielder brought in, He's already got a lot of options in the wide areas. Um, he's already got multiple players for the fullback positions. I'm, I am, I'm wondering where it would be. <laughs> well, there you go. We'll find out in the fullness of time. Derek Crawford saying George Jack and Marcus needs to keep his top on because his misses is getting out of control. <laughs> there you go. There, there you have it. Uh, George Jack and Marcus likes the top off celebration, doesn't he, Sean? He does, but he's absolutely mental doing it at Hamden and a day like Saturday, to be honest. But <laughs> well, there you go. But listen, that I, uh, I guess we will wait and see. But it was interesting because the manager also said that Michael Nickerson deals with everything, yeah, and he gets involved at a late stage mm-hmm. or the later stages. And he said so far, nothing's mm-hmm. came to a uh, not, nothing. That he needs to address was his phrase, I think. There's nothing that I need uh, to address at this minute in time. So uh, he made that kind of. It was when you were in the, the presser after it. I think yeah. he said, uh, "If anybody, he, that, he was asked, has anybody made a concrete bid for Roger yes, right. Marcus?" And he says, "If anybody bids in concrete, I'll not be entertaining it." Um, <laughs> but after that, he, he said what you mentioned there. He said, "There's nothing." Michael Nicholson deals with the majority of that. If it mm-hmm. gets to me, then we know it's serious. Which the the implication there is that it's not got to him yet. So it's not that serious, um, despite reports. He was in a very droll mood on Saturday, mm-hmm. a jovial mood, and he also had the. Uh, he was asked if the, <laughs> if he was lucky that Celtic didn't get a penalty against him when he came away with that quote. I'm a very lucky man, didn't he? So it's obviously felt on through to the players. Yeah. You know, so he, he likes a bit of humour, tongue in cheek, does. Ange Postecoglou, it's uh, which was all, mm-hmm. it, which was quite funny, you know, when he's. When he's like that, he's a, it's you see another side to him when he does that as well. Aye. But no, that um, is quite interesting, Sean. Aye, is- Peter Duffy coming in saying it is striker for him. He says that the, he feels that Celtic don't have depth at striker. One injury and they would struggle. Uh, they either need to keep or replace like we like. Um, what I would say to that, the, the, again, I, I keep going on about this and it's not really happened yet, but the B team production line that... that isn't really a production line because it's not really doing much lately. Um, if not when there's injuries or people are sold, then when do you give them a chance? So with that in mind, if Yakimakis was to go and say that this show deal is floundering the way that people are saying and it maybe doesn't happen or say that there is someone else in mind but it's not going to happen for a couple of weeks, Joey Dawson's got eight goals in four games for the, mm. for the B team. He's absolutely turned it up. He's in fire. Um, he's got 13 and 13 overall with a wee assist put in there as well what more can you realistically do if you're hoping to get picked for the first team from the B team than, than what he's doing yeah. um, and I know I made a similar case for Rocco Vata when he was taken to Sydney that he was, he was lighting up the B team so get taken to Sydney make yourself stand out in training maybe if you get time on the park put yourself in the thoughts but obviously, the whole time we've been saying that, the squad depth tells me that there's so many people in front of him for a wide berth that it's so unlikely that he's going to get a chance. He's still got his, he's still got his debut, don't get me wrong. Uh, 
But with the Joey Dawson thing, if you're scoring for fun and the striker and the first team gets sold and no replacements have already been, been lined up, and all right, maybe you could say Maida is the replacement because if Kyogo's not playing and you want to rotate him, it might be still a case that Maida gets played centre-forward before a young player gets put up. But still, to me, you're going, when else are you going to get put in that squad? Um, yeah, that's, so that's, that's just that's another thing to think about. I don't know if it will happen, but but he's he's absolutely on fire for this B team at the moment. It's a valid argument, Sean. It really is, uh, and those stats seem to back that up, don't they? Mm-hmm. And Rand said he was big on the B team, wasn't it? Which is why he sent Steve McManus down to exactly charge yeah. the training to make sure that they were uh, replicating what the mm-hmm. the first team do. So you might see that. Sean, moving forward, you might. The thing yeah. is, we, and, we, it's depending on what happens, isn't it, with aye. the market situation and if they bring another one in? They said um, exactly what you said there, Darren Adi and, and Stephen McManus are the ones in place in McManus because he spent a season with Ange yeah. Postacoglu at first team level and wanted it to be closer, mm-hmm. wanted to kind of make it as, as similar as possible to, start, to make the transition easier if, if, yeah. if and when people go. Because they train, the, the, Darren Adi said that early in the season, <clears throat> pardon me, that they train with the first team, they'll, they'll go and they'll say, we need four, yeah, four up, whatever. And that's a chance to impress. Of course, it's a chance to impress. Um, but there's still that that bridge. Darno D said at the time, it's not as far away as what they think. But you could understand why people at own Moffat wanted to go and yep. get first team, uh, first team minutes elsewhere. Yes. He was on the periphery last year, got a couple of chances, obviously played his role in that Ross County winner for that in Alston, different things like that. Uh, played in the League Cup final or was involved in the League Cup final. But ultimately, there's still that that kind of yeah. gap between making it from the B team into the first team uh, over the last few years. And it might not be that it is as, it is as soon as the first season that, that Stephen McManus goes down. It might be that it's just unlucky that, that, that some of the players that are hitting 19-20 might not be able to make that that jump. But the ones that like Rocco Vata, 17, and different things, they, they should realistically be the ones that are, that are looking to make it up. And again, yeah. with Joey Dawson, I'm just throwing his name out there because he's it's a striker. He's yeah. already within the, the club. There's this aspect of making sure you play in a similar way to the first team and he's scoring for fun. So if a striker gets sold, to me, maybe look at him, maybe 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 see what, what he could bring. Well, I think uh, I'm sure that'll be in the manager's thoughts, but we've got, what, two weeks of the window left? Just over two weeks? Mm-hmm. And, yep, aye. Uh, there will be, it'll be interesting to see in terms of incomings and outgoings, what happens at Celtic? Jackie Marcus, will he stay? Will he go, Sean? <laughs> uh, it's, it's going to be the great conundrum over the next couple of weeks, isn't it? Yep. But that's been nearly 45 minutes, Sean. Been waxing yep. very cool. <laughs> Just direct you to this ticker tape at the bottom, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new offer, and the first 100 new subscribers will receive a limited edition A3 artwork of Callum McGregor by popular community artist, Celtic artist made by Frankie. If you subscribe today, Celtic Way website, a pound for four months of access to everything that's written on the site. And all you have to do is click a button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Go on, hit the button, get yourself a a limited edition A3 artwork of Carla McGregor by Made by Frankie. It's a really good deal and four months for a pound of everything that we do on the website. And you'll enjoy it. Something there for everybody, Sean. Cracking yep. deal, isn't it? Certainly is. I'm obviously biased, but I think it is. I I think it I think it offers a wee bit of something for everybody, whether you like uh, big interviews, uh, long read features, whether you're into the stats, whether it's uh, match stuff like the detailed player ratings, different things like that. Um, I think there's a wee bit of something for everybody in there, eh? Excellent. And we also say thank you to Seneca, the new sponsors of the Morning Briefing and Celtic Way Morning Briefing, now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can also find more out about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. Sean, Celtic will play Rangers. Yep. Hamden, February the 26th. A lot of time to build that up between now and then. But the holders are making a great defence of their trophy. 
I actually, we forgot the last point, which is actually shocking from us, right enough. Uh, Derek Crawford's just remembering, uh, reminding us because we've put it in the thing. Uh, it's Frank McGarvey's funeral uh, later on in the day, 1 pm. And the reason I put it in the, the title was, well, one to remind us, but also to remind everybody else in case you didn't know. The club has confirmed that there's going to be a live stream of his funeral for anybody, obviously, that doesn't either doesn't want to uh, go and, and, and actually go there physically or can't make it physically or is in another country or whatever. But the, the club's going to run a live stream for that. There's an article on the website um, with a link to it, but the club's Twitter account's got it, the YouTube channel's got it. Um, so one o'clock if you want to, uh, want to tune in for that. Thanks for that, Derek. Yes, Frank McGarvey's funeral today. I'm sure everybody has their own special memories of Frank McGarvey. Wonderful player for Celtic, wonderful goal scorer for Celtic, mm-hmm. Sean. That's yep. one o'clock, you said today, yeah? The funeral. One takes- o'clock, yep. Excellent. Well, bless Frank McGarvey. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for that, Sean. Thank you for your contribution today. Thanks, everybody, for your comments. Uh, yep. We always try and flick up some of them and, uh, yeah and engage because we enjoy it every day we're here at the same time more or less people g would argue that's not true but uh, she said earlier he's been long he's been there longer since 10 o'clock but uh, yeah we try and make it 10 ish sean isn't it every day uh, uh, there's some more work's been done in castle haggerty which delay today but hopefully normal service will be resumed if it's not by the end of this week it'll certainly be by next week but thanks very much guys hope you have a Another happy Monday. Celtic are in the final, Sean, of the first uh, major domestic silverware competition of the season. Yep. They will play Rangers. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Tony. Cheers, guys. <laughs>